How are we doing, everyone? Please remember to like us on all your social media outlets, TikTok, LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube, and we're on the putting green. And as much as I talk about golf, golf instruction, I don't hear a lot of you guys and gals talk about what happens on the putting green. And we know we drive for show, but we putt for dough, a saying that we've all heard. And it really emphasizes the importance of knowing what we're doing here and trying to eliminate dumb mistakes and making sure our score doesn't go up with those three putts and four putts that can happen out here. So I want you to think a little bit different about how we're gonna go through our putting practice today. Normally, I'm sure you get very mechanical and there are some mechanical things that I like to discuss with my students and have them do. But today I want you to think of your target awareness and trusting your ability to make a shorter length putt. Paul Lazinger was one of my favorite PGA professionals to watch on tour uh, years ago in the, in the early 90s there. And one thing I learned from him was that he always encouraged people to putt or to try to hit above ground targets. He mentioned that it was harder to imagine hitting something into a hole like our putting hole and that it was easier to kind of envision something above ground. Hence, a young child throwing a piece of clay or a rubber ball at a garage or the way we used to throw rocks at trees, those were above ground objects. Or those of you like me that have siblings, sometimes throwing something at your sibling. So knowing that you have an actual target, a visible target, and can see the contact, that's an important step in having target awareness, and we can use that here. So one thing that Paul Enziger would do, he would grab two golf balls, and before he would aim at a hole, he would take those two golf balls, maybe put them about a foot apart, maybe two feet apart, he practiced putting one ball into the other ball. So we're going to do that a few times here. The reason I like this is for one, it's very simple. I can get in the habit of just hitting several putts, um, you know, kind of consecutively without stopping. And I can also work on the firmness that I make that ball contact with. If I hit the ball and I want it to stay within a foot of the actual golf ball I'm hitting, Okay, that's better for the slower paces. If I need to hit a little firmer, maybe I want to make contact and be a little firmer and try to make the separation between the two balls after contact more like two feet. Okay, so I'll give you an example of that. If we want to be a little firmer, let's see if we can get to separate a little more here. Boom, and that was way stronger. Right, you can definitely see that from the back camera there. All right, but that gives you an idea of how you can work on your speed just by taking two golf balls and hitting them side by side. And I always point out to people as well that if you take a golf ball and you imagine the size of a hole or a cup, that ball is a lot smaller. So if we can make contact from one to two feet out, golf ball to golf ball, we know we can make a putt of that same distance, okay? So Paul Isinger talked heavily about that as a starting point. Then for those longer putts, those eight to 10 foot putts, he would use a Dixie cup. Once again, an above ground visual target. So we're gonna kind of pace out about uh, close to 10 feet here. And we're gonna hit a couple of putts to demonstrate that. And, and once again, I think it takes pressure away from us focusing on trying to get our ball into a hole. And it gives us an above ground target that we can definitely adjust um, you know, based on, on our, you know, our shots and we can get instant feedback there. So got our cup out there. All right, not bad pace. A little right of my target, I'll make a small adjustment here. A little better putt, boom, and we hit our target, okay? So you can imagine doing that for even 20 minutes and hitting at a Dixie cup or even doing the old diamond drill where you're placing golf balls on all sides of that Dixie cup like we would a golf hole and taking your time going through your pre-shot routine and hitting each one of those putts at the above ground target, okay? So those are two for close proximity. For longer putts where we don't expect to necessarily make the putt but we do want to have lag putts that can stay within two to three feet of the, the radius of the hole there to ensure that we're making more two putts than three putts. And for that, I actually have a green bucket. You know, a painter's bucket, you can get at Lowe's. Sometimes I'll even use a trash can and I'll set one at the far end and I'll have my students just practice trying to hit that bucket or that trash can. I know from long putts, if you're able to hit the trash can and keep your golf ball 
within a certain distance of that target, um, then I know that you're able to kind of control your speed with your lag putts. And this is once again where we can hit a lot of putts from 30, 40, 50, 60 feet. And now the more times you do that, you're giving your brain a mental Rolodex of what you can do when you're actually playing golf, okay? So I'm gonna move these out of the way and from the back camera, you'll see our, our green bucket that's, that's right up there. And we're gonna hit a couple of putts towards that target, okay? A little bit of a break there, a little bit uphill as we go up. Um, but I think that this is an easier way to get instant feedback Drops the anxiety a little bit. We don't need the anxiety when we're practicing. So let's just hit a couple of putts here. All right, so that's a pretty good putt. And it got to the hill and it really fell off. But the distance, I'm about pin high. A lot further than the three or four feet that I want to be and I didn't hit my, my target. Of course, your coach likes to pick the hardest ridge break and the hardest thing I can find to show you guys what we're doing here. Um, but I'm gonna exaggerate and aim a little further left here and see if we can ride that ridge with a similar speed. Uh, so we're riding the ridge, riding the ridge. Speed wasn't bad, we're gonna end up in a similar place. Okay, let's do one more. Put a little more pace on this one. Try to get it up the hill and keep it on the left side of the hole if I can. So that was a way better putt. And at least I kept it on the top tier that time, a little deeper, a little more aggressive. But I still learned a lot from hitting those three or four putts towards that, that long, longer distance there. So that's three ways for you to kind of work on your putting without even having a hole. These are things we can do inside too, especially here in Michigan when the weather changes. You got carpet, you got a place inside where you can work on putting a golf ball into a golf ball putting a golf ball into a coffee mug or a Dixie cup of some kind, something that's not going to necessarily move when you, when you hit it with a golf ball, or for those longer putts, indoor or outdoor, putting something that's a little larger in radius and practicing hitting that from a longer distance. But those are ways that you should be able to improve your distance control and your target awareness simply by having an above ground target. Okay. So now we're going to get into another part of um, you know, a putting practice that I, I sort of preach that's very related to this. DNA Golf Instruction, we are brand ambassadors for the NeuroPut training aid. Um, and this device is awesome for giving you that above ground target. And we're gonna go through the several steps and in ways that we can use this device to improve our putting. And we're gonna get closer to an actual golf hole to do this for this particular model. But there is an indoor model and an outdoor model. Uh, the outdoor model has cleats that can sit either over a hole or right into the putting green. Won't damage the putting green, they heal overnight. Um, or the indoor model that has um, some Velcro on the bottom so it does stick to your carpet. So we're going to dive right into that. <laughs> 